All right. So, um, Minecraft is still going to go on, but I thought I'd start this because it will be, I'll be able to be more consistent with this kind of let's play. But what we're going to be doing is, uh, Civilization 2 Test of Time. We're going to be playing the original game because I, and I always customize the world because I'm not really a big fan of how it shows up most other times. But I'm going to do s small landmass and archipelago because it's nice. And then arid and cool. Four billion years. Now, difficulty wise, I always, specifically, I always choose prince. I have not moved up to king or emperor yet. Seven so there's raging hordes. Customize ready. Everything looks fine. I'm gonna pick a each civ is like by color. I know most people here have probably played five and six, but these are like separated by color and I like to usually choose, the sieves do act a little different, but it's not like as, um, advanced. Yeah, it's not nearly as advanced as it is in current sieves. And so I'm going to choose one of these. Uh, I'll choose Russia. Goody Hut right next to us. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this. I have to find where it is because it always switches between Test of Time and Multiplayer Gold Edition, which is kind of annoying. And then I sometimes go to the wrong place. Lenin to Emperor Lenin of the Russians is what it saved as. It's kind of funny, so. <laughs> now, in Civ 2, there were no like resources. I mean, there are. I mean, you can see there's a pheasant on the map. But, it's. They're all basically like bonus resources. You can't trade any of them. Although, one thing that's nice is we do have this river here. If you could see, rivers take up an entire tile in this Civ. You also notice there's no territory because I didn't take the goodie out automatically. Um, we're gonna start with the barracks because that's always best thing to build at the start of the game. And now, as as for this, your first goal should be what well, one you want to get out of. You want to get out of the the despotism that government as soon as possible. Where's the Republic? Hmm. And there it is. It's Republic. Got this going. Alphabet. The alphabet doesn't really give us much of anything. But we got barracks. So we'll build warrior. And then we'll build another warrior. And then we'll settlers. 
funny thing is, in this Civ game, settlers and workers do the same thing. In fact, settlers, they even upgrade. Like settlers will do the job of both workers and settlers. But then they eventually upgrade to engineers, which are like the same thing, just faster, and they have a couple extra build options, like air, air bases and um, transform terrain. But anyway, that gave us archers, which is actually not too bad. Archers have an attack of, um, I believe, three and a defense of two. And we got some pretty nice area around here. There's not that many bonus resources, but we got, terrain wise, it's really good. I mean, we have this is a big river. And rivers don't usually show up big like this in two. Usually they're very small. Especially seeing as I chose I archipelago with small land masses. This is actually a really good starting area. And what the river will give us is trade and we'll be able to have a really good economy this early in the game. And that's the end of that river system. It's, that's a big, big river system. And usually they're not that big in Civ 2. Usually the rivers are very puny. Like, I don't, I don't know why they're always so small. We'll do, I'll do more settlers because... Because this group of settlers is not going to... We're just gonna automate him. That's what he'll do. And funny thing about the way the resources work is it's kind of amusing. It's funny the way they work compared to new games. All they really do is give tile bonuses. And other than that, they don't do anything. It's like you don't have to require any for any units or anything. For small landmass archipelago, we're actually getting some decent land here. And one thing I probably will want to do, given the way we're going to play this, I think Great Lighthouse is probably a good idea. Because what it does in this game is it allows the triremes, they can go into any, any water tile. And you're probably wondering, why is there no Fog of War? There is Fog of War. It just... All it does is make it so you can't see units further away, just like normal, but it doesn't darken anything. So it's it's still there, it's just... Oh man. Um, support. We're gonna disband that warrior. Because Moscow has no support available. This is a pretty good spot right here. We get a good bit of river from that. So he's gonna go over there. And that's where that city is gonna be founded. And here we go with Carthage. 
most of the times I don't really deal with in any expansions versions of Civ 2 the AI are just they they pretty much there's nothing you can do they'll always hate you which is kind of stupid I don't like that I mean they had thought but what they were doing was going to make the game harder really all it does is make the game a bit more annoying and you you can't reason with AI, you can't ally, you rarely can ally with any of them. There's really no point in dealing with it. And map making, it, which is what will give us the great lighthouse. Or as it's called in this game, lighthouse. That's it. No advances towards that. We'll do masonry because that's masonry can be a very useful thing. I believe I just got republic, so we can go with despotism. What? Oh, well, maybe not. Well, I just revolted for no reason, but. Oh, I guess it wasn't done going to Republic. And there's Carthage, right there. Uh, eh, eh. For small landmass archipelago, it's starting on the same landmass as me. They're actually pretty far away. Oh, I meant to turn the music off for this. music. The music can be a bit loud at times in this game. That song wasn't too bad. But there's some some ones that are just way too noisy. Especially there's one that has an organ playing. That one that's way that one is way too loud. want to try and talk over freaking loud organ playing um I should probably put a city up here or barbarians will start spawning up that way uh, Civ 2 definitely has my favorite barbarian system out of all the games there's no camps but they spawn very randomly they can capture cities and if they capture a city, it's you could take it back. It's just they may hold it for a while, and it allows them to spawn units like crazy. It wants me to change the tax rate, and that would be why. But of course, this civilization, they're going to ask for everything. Every time they contact me, Babylon. Okay, this is a bit ridiculous. Small landmass, and we've met a second person. And apparently, one of their cities is nearby. Kev, 2620. Um, I'm probably going to invade these other civs near near me. I really don't like dealing with very close AI, especially on this this really small map. They're going to get annoying very quickly. Oh, it looks like Babylon and Carthage are actually at war with each other.
Really, guys? You couldn't wait that long at all, could you? Just uncovering more of the unexplored area. St. Petersburg has built settlers, but and I guess city walls are free, and you might as well build them because you don't have to maintain them. So I think I have a bit more control over how much time I know is going on in these than the Minecraft videos. So I think these may be only half hour segments. Violated, there's Nineveh, right there. I wanted to actually find out where that was. So I think what I'll do is I'll get up to chivalry and we'll just rush them with knights. It's probably the best option. Okay, we get another settler here. And he's going to go down to that hill down there. And that's the AI building a wonder right there. Either way, it's going to be my wonder eventually, so. That doesn't matter to me. And because it was Carthage, and I, like I said, I'm going to invade Carthage. Now one thing that's good on these hills is do irrigation, but I just want to build cities quickly. So I'm gonna do this. Early in a game like this, you're not gonna get very far in population. You'll get far once you start building your first wonder. Uh, and of course, they're going to start asking me to pay gold and tribute, and because it's so early in the game and I don't want a war yet, that's the only reason I'm saying yes. See, this is why Civ 2's AI sucks. Because that's what they do. They'll just constant every time they contact you it's like give us this or we'll kill you basically if only they didn't change the AI for the expansion packs because if they didn't change it the classic Civ 2 AI is actually really good and well not not good in that sense I mean like they don't constantly demand things from you only the ones that hate you will do that So anyways, that archer's going to sit there for a while. Just 
to keep barbarians away if any show up. Well, I guess we're not building the Great Lighthouse because it just said the Vikings have nearly completed it. So we're not getting that in, I guess. Kind of disappointing, actually. thinking I wanted to go with the great lighthouse but maybe I'll take a different approach most of the time I don't really care about the great lighthouse I have this method of playing that gets me gives me science quickly I learn technologies fast so I think that's usually why I don't do the great lighthouse I mean because who needs that when you're going to just get astronomy quickly anyway and you get caravels and they can go into the ocean that's all you really need but yeah what you do is the method for getting science quickly is well one move out of the despotism government quickly and you can do either monarchy or republic. Republic will give you a bit more of an edge in science, but it will be more expensive to support military, which you don't support by gold in this game. You support cities will actually take away from the production instead. Like if and republic's a bit more expensive than monarchy. And also you get issues with like unhappiness a lot of the time. In which case we're going that way, so I might have to take a small detour, go for ceremonial burial, so I can build temples so people are happy then. Oh, and that's another thing that's not in this game is religion. Religion came into the Civ series in four. And in 4, there was 7 religious cho choices of religions, and then also no state religion. So yeah, we'll go with ceremonial burial. And then a republic now. You have a bit more choices with taxes, you can go a little higher with them. They could go up to 80. So you got 10% luxuries. I need to look at how these cities are doing happiness wise. And this is why this trade is good, because trade can go into science. It's basically like commerce in the current, in the current Civ games. It changed to commerce in 3. Civ 3 was the first one that had commerce. In fact, Civ 3 was the first thing that had, first one that had a lot of things that current ones have. Like uh, culture, borders, things like that. These first turns are usually kind of quite boring, so not much will be happening during this. Then we're going to go bronze working, and then we'll go straight to astronomy. You can actually get there quicker than the way it sounds. St. Petersburg running dangerously low on food. Well, you're going to for a while, probably. Holy crap, in fact, people were actually starving here. There. So it has to have no... no settler, I guess. That's not really a big deal. 
you can eventually, I'll eventually be able to build one from there anyway. Once it's improved more. And not only that, I'll get one from here that'll make up for it. St. Petersburg has built walls, but there's not really anything we can do here right now. I mean, the Great Library is good because it gives you everything, every technology that the other civs learn. Um, I might as well build that because there's nothing really else to do there. And sometimes it's good to keep, because another one, oftentimes what happens is you do the, the two wonders that get you science quickly. By going to astronomy, building Copernicus Observatory, then going to theory of gravity and building Newton's University. And but, but then what often happens is you can't get um oh crap. What is it? You can't get the Great Library because it strays off a little bit. It's one extra wonder you end up not building. But then it leaves one of the AI sieves always up right behind you most of the time because they'll get everything you get. And I suppose that's being able to keep up is better. Aztecs built the Great Wall, Marco Polo's embassy starting built by America. Usually I do also build Marco Polo's embassy. But I guess for once we'll try not doing it. And this guy, he's probably... No. They, I, when they ask you for help in wars, they sometimes don't actually ask, threaten you with something, tell you that, that you have to give them something. Um, we can do phalanxes now. And there's one actually really good way of taking advantage of having a weak military due to Republic early in the game like this. You build a phalanx and a catapult in every city and just leave them there. And every time someone approaches you, you just hit them with the catapult. It's actually a surprisingly useful tactic. I've never actually really used that tactic though. I've seen people use it and it's very effective. Oh, and here's something that they brought back in 6 that I'm not too happy about. The AI would contact you just to brag. They're showing off that they have philosophy and we don't, and telling us that we're not allowed to trade anything for it. Okay, well, it was part one, and I'll see you in the next part for this video. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow I'll get the another Minecraft part in. I just still struggling a bit with motivation, but I'm getting better. Just trying to motivate myself to make more videos. But hopefully, maybe next video I may be able to start a war with one of these guys here. Oh, that city disappeared. Um, but, yeah. But this is our empire so far. It's nothing, really.